scenario I feel most women are at the younger age group and you have heard of stories like the mother went, mother was 45 years, she went around inviting everybody for the daughter's wedding and suddenly she realized that she, you know, she's, she had not menstruated for six months, she felt something moving and she was pregnant. You know, this, these are the kind of stories we see. Otherwise, most of us have finished the pregnancy at an early age. But today, over the last two decades, we see that women are pursuing pregnancy even in the later age groups. In this graph, you can see the maximum pregnancy happens between, I think, 16 to 30. And today, very many women are going beyond 35 years. And this is the age which is set as the cutoff for what is being called as advanced maternal age pregnancy, perhaps because the fertility is beginning to come down and the risks of genetic abnormalities in the offspring of these women when they are more than 35 years or older. Sometimes it's even called a geriatric pregnancy, but I do not think it is right to call it, call it a geriatric pregnancy. More than 40 is called as very advanced maternal age. Vama. So more than 35 is Ama and more than 40 is Vama and more than 45 is Ima. That is extremely advanced maternal age. So Ama, Vama and Ima. So they try to give very many definitions but ultimately, you know, is it a senior gestator, geriatric pregnancy, old folks boom, but Ultimately, we have boiled down to the terminology as ama, vama, and ima. So why advanced age? Women have become achievers. All of us want to pursue education, good job, career. You would like to take challenges. So many times, having a baby at the age of 25, 30 today for a career woman becomes a little difficult because gone are the nucleus, gone are the joint families which supported the babies. So women are getting married at a later age group changing role of women in the community, increased uh, availability of contraceptives, and also they feel that, oh, ART is available. doesn't matter if I'm 40, I can go and have a baby whenever I want at 40. But this, so all this together is leading to pregnancies at later age groups, and the average age at, it, at which women conceive children has increased from 23 to 26, and you also have some pregnancies between uh, you know, the higher age groups, you can see here, the rate is going up. And interesting facts about some advanced age pregnancies, Eramati Mangamal from Hyderabad, at the age of 73 years, conceived through IVF and gave birth to twin girls via cesarean section in 2019. She's supposed to be the oldest recorded pregnancy. But I, I later did hear that from Punjab also there were pregnancies at 80, and somebody in Tamil Nadu also had a a uh, baby with pacemaker on. And Don Brook, at the age of 59 years, conceived naturally and gave birth to a son in 1997. She's the oldest recorded pregnancy in this manner. I suppose there are many more that I may not know. And the risks of advanced maternal age could be maternal risk and fetal risk, ectopic pregnancy, high death for mole, multiple gestation, preeclampsia, cesarean delivery, maternal mortality, and on the other side of the fetus, spontaneous miscarriage, chromosomal problems, preterm delivery, small for gestation age, intrauterine and fetal death, autism spectrum disorder seem to be more common than that of younger age group. Ectopic pregnancy is said to be higher in these women, three to four, four increase, probably because of the loss of myometrial myoelectrical activity in the fallopian tube. So tubal transport may be altered, though I have not practically seen many ectopics in this age group, because conception itself seems to be much less. Molar pregnancy and that is complete mole and partial mole. Both are of higher incidence. Complete mole you can see here. Above 40 is one in 1,000, above 45, one in 157. And above 50, it is 1 in 8. And partial mole also, the incidence is higher. 
This may be because there is a fertilization of abnormal oocyte, giving rise to complete mole. Multiple gestation is said to be higher. I would attribute it to more of ovulation induction and higher use of ART in older women. Hypertensive disorders. I would really be worried about this and the incidence of preeclampsia. There is endothelial damage, which is increased with age, decreased maternal hemodynamic adaptation during pregnancy, loss of compliance of the uterine blood vessels, and comorbid disease. All this can lead to higher incidence of hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. With advanced maternal age, it was 1.2%, and with the VAMA, it was 1.5% higher than for women with EMA, PET is an independent risk factor for PPH. Also, the future chances of heart failure, coronary disease, and stroke could be higher. And many of them may do well with the prophylactic low-dose aspirin. In my own uh, uh, clinic, since we're dealing with IVF, I went through a few of the uh, files. I saw we had about eight patients above the age of 50, of which 50% uh, had severe PAH, and the next group was between 45, 45 to 50, only about 15 pregnancies. And these were the ones who really troubled me with the PAH. The remarkable the problem that happened in these ladies was hypertension. And three of them had HELP syndrome. All of them did well. But it was frightening for me. So today, I do not try to get, pregnant, uh, get women pregnant beyond the age of 45. When you were younger, I think you are more naughty and you would like to try. So those days we had pregnancies of the higher age group, but today we are restricting them up to 45 years. So with AMA, preeclampsia group had a higher proportion of poor maternal outcome, possibly because of pulmonary edema, HELP syndrome, visual impairment, postpartum hemorrhage, and eclampsia compared to women of younger age group and gestational diabetes and is definitely on the higher side because of reduction in insulin sensitivity. We had a beautiful lecture just now about the insulin requirements. Deterioration of pancreatic beta cell function, elevated pregnancy BMI, elevated pre-pregnancy BMI also contributes to increased chances of GDM. The incidence is 1.2 with the advanced maternal age and with VAMA it is 2%. Caesarean deliveries are definitely much higher because in India, as it is IVF pregnancies, I would say that 80% of them have a caesarean section. They all come with a horoscope. They ask for you know, funny times like 1.30 midnight, 4.30 in the morning. And when they refuse, I, I know this husband caught hold of the wife and say, Vari Pola, Vara Dr. Krangava. You know? And one girl waited at the doorstep till 7 p.m. in the evening saying that I have to do her caesarean at 1.30 midnight. When I refused, she only had kept another doctor ready in another hospital. She went there and had the section done at that time. So that's how it goes with IVF pregnancies, the Muhurtam babies. So increased risk of labor dystocia, maternal preferences, lower treatment threshold for intervention. All of us are a bit worried when they conceive at a later, later age group. Especially in India, I think they are well-fed, well-nourished, no physical work. Many of them might be carrier women who may not have time, but as it is, it has become a style during pregnancy not to do any physical work. They ask you questions like, can I sit on the floor? Can I do bending? You know, these are the questions being asked nowadays. Even the poorest of poor has the mother as their ayah who feeds them four times a day and sees that the daughter takes rest. So all the age groups today are doing less work and chances of cesarean section are higher, leave alone the advanced maternal age group. Fetal malposition, maternal comorbidities also lead to higher chance of cesarean deliveries. This is a single center study, finds advanced maternal age is associated with gestational diabetes and cesarean delivery increased chances. You can see here, about 35 years, 406 women, their chances of gestational diabetes was higher and also cesarean delivery was higher. Maternal mortality rate was 7.7 .7 times higher for very advanced maternal age group compared to younger women. And MMR was four times higher with advanced maternal age also. 
could be because of hemorrhage, infection, cardiovascular pathologies, and other coexisting diseases. Amniotic fluid embolism and obstetric shock are eightfold and threefold higher at VAMA comparing to 25 to 29 year old women. Decline in oocyte quality and mitochondrial dysfunctions, chromosomal abnormalities, all these are on the rise with, with the advanced maternal age group. So we have higher chance of miscarriage many times because of the chromosomal problems. Most common problem is trisomy 22 followed by trisomy 16 and trisomy 21. The solution may be fertility preservation. You know, famously this Diana Hayden, she is the one who always proclaims. She doesn't mind telling people that I vitrified my eggs when I was 30 and later at the age of 39 and 41 she could have babies. So it encourage others, other women to freeze their eggs when they're younger, the social freezing. And sometimes, of course, donor egg, IVF with PGT, IVF with surrogacy, all this can help these women. Spontaneous miscarriage, you can see, below the age of 30 years, it's only 12%. 30 to 34 is 15%. 35 to 39 years, it's 25%. After 40, you see the incidence is 51, and ultimately 93% at more than 45 years. So chromosomal abnormalities were studied in the first trimester miscarriages, a series of 1,011 patients. You can see that below 35 years, it is more of trisomy 16 and trisomy 22, and above 35 years, it is higher incidence of trisomy 22 followed by trisomy 15 and 21. Trisomy 21 and 18 showed a very close correlation with age. And as age increases by one year, odds ratio of trisomy 21 tended to increase by 1.17 times. And odds ratio of trisomy 18 also tended to increase by 1.18. And also the fetal enucleoides tend to increase by 1.16 times as age increases by one year after advanced maternal age, that's after 35 years. This is a Korean study, you can see, once again, uh, trisomy 21 and trisomy 18, both are increasing sharply after the age of 35. The pneumatic chromosomal abnormalities and screen, screening tests to identify chromosomal abnormalities. How do we do it? A detailed first trimester ultrasound along with First time is the combined test or circulating free DNA is highly recommended. Invasive tests in these women with advanced maternal age group are not essential unless the screening tests are showing a problem. So congenital anomalies with advanced maternal age group were increased by two times for cardiac defects, esophageal atresia, and with very advanced maternal age group, the craniosynostosis also was increased compared to younger age group women. Preterm delivery, increased risk of both spontaneous and medically indicated preterm birth, perhaps because of PIH, IUGR, etc. 1.24 increase in the rate of preterm delivery in women with age more than 40 years as compared to age 30 to 34. So once again, the increased chance of preeclampsia also could be leading to higher chances of induction at preterm stage or borderline maturity stage. Small for gestational age and fetal growth restriction, a positive dose response relationship between advanced maternal age and increased risk of FGR. 1.53 fold increased risk of growth restriction in women of age more than 40 years. Once again, stillbirth and IUD are also increased, maybe because of placental aging as a result of vascular dysfunction due to advanced age. Two-fold increase in stillbirth in advanced maternal age and three to four-fold increase with very advanced maternal age compared to younger women. APCA scores did not seem to be very different, but once again with very advanced maternal age group, the five-minute APCA score seemed to be a little less. What about the Father's age, 
There could be decreased sperm quality, decreased semen volume, motility, sperm morphology, etc., leading to lesser chance of assisted uh, pregnancy conception, and, incre and decreased birth weight, and offspring, they can, the babies can also have schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, autism, childhood cancer, Klinefelter syndrome, etc. So be careful about the advancing paternal age also. So how do you manage? Preconception counseling, fertility counseling, chronic disease management, that of diabetes and hypertension, folic acid, optimization of medication for pregnancy safety, ultrasound for dating, chronic disease assessment, low-dose aspirin therapy, if indicated, assess for a nuploidy, and uh, detailed fetal anatomy survey, surveillance for preterm labor and preeclampsia, fetal growth assessment by ultrasound, consider antenatal testing at 36 weeks, and delivery at 40 weeks for women age 40. So recommendations are almost the same, what I have said, prenatal and antenatal recognition of risk factors, and proper counseling, and discuss the plans with the patient. Do not fright her, because we immediately write high-risk pregnancy. So she'll be much more petrified. So counsel them, saying that with good care, they can do very well. So ultrasound in the low-dose aspirin helps many to prevent PAH. First trimester ultrasound, prenatal genetic screening, detailed fetal anatomy so ultrasound, growth assessment, antenatal fetal surveillance, induction of labor at 39 weeks, with diabetes, we definitely uh, induce earlier and uh, with PIH as and when indicated. Counseling that vaginal delivery is safe and appropriate, but do cesarean only if indicated, not just because of the age. So other side of the coin is they're more educated, financially more secure, emotionally better prepared for pregnancy. So overall, these mothers can do very well in spite of the apparent risk of pregnancy. So support them, give them good antenatal care, and they will all do very well. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Dr. Asha, for that wonderful uh, um, presentation. I think the problem of this advanced maternal age is here to stay. Whether it be spontaneous or assisted, whatever it is, we have to deal with it in the coming years. And in the next generation, I think they are going to see more and more of it. We ourselves have been uh, seeing it more.